guys, so last month I made a video about me being a graduate student at the San Francisco State University. Originally, I wasn't going to post this particular video on this channel, but I thought it would be fun for you guys to get a taste of what it would be like if I was your section leader. I have two co-section leaders working with me, Abby and Sean. I actually made a video with them just last week. I'll put a little link right here so you can go check that out. It's about how not to get sick in music school. Because there are so many of us in this section, 16 of us flutists. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zagoka did let me make a video instead of doing a sectional because it is so difficult to get 16 people together for a sectional when everybody has different schedules. So this video is actually directed towards my fluties in the San Francisco State Wind Ensemble and all the rest of you watching can pretend that you are part of my flute section. The music that I'm going to be going over right now is for the October 29th and November 1st concerts. So the October 29th one is in the canoe Hall and the November 1st concert is in the McKenna Theater. So two different venues, okay? It's actually all written here in the syllabus. Make sure you go and look at it and write it down. And actually all the rest of you who are watching this who are not part of the flute section, you should probably write it down too and come. So the one in the McKenna Theater on November 1st is actually a collab with the Los Medanos College. Los Medanos College. Yes, I took Spanish in high school. I can totally pronounce it correctly. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you couldn't come to the band retreat that happened in about mid-September, and I did go over a few points there that were sort of general section reminders. I did kind of give it really quickly, I think after a couple of rehearsals, but that was a while ago, so I'll just boom, 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 go through them again. First thing is blend. Just make sure that you are blending in the, not just the pitch, but the tone quality, everything. You actually want to sound like the people next to you and actually design disappear into their sound. This is ensemble playing. If you blend, you will inevitably be in tune. Just keep in mind that just intonation is different from equal temperament, which is what the piano nowadays is tuned to. Whatever the note is on the bottom of the wind ensemble, we actually have to tune to that. So sometimes we have to be flat and sometimes we have to be sharp. Now this kind of sounds like it's rocket science, but it's really not. All you have to do is listen to the bottom note of the wind ensemble. Your ear will actually tell you when you're in tune because you'll literally just blend into their sound. So that's sort of a rudimentary introduction to the whole harmonic series thing. I might make another video in the future that goes into this in more detail, but since this video is just for my fluties in my section, all I want you to think right now is just to listen to what they call to the back of the band, and you want to just blend into their sound. The other thing that I covered in the band retreat was that it's just so you know, flutes and clarinets have the complete opposite tuning tendencies. The clarinets sit right behind us, so it's very easy for us to actually listen to them. Their instruments are shaped in a conical shape while ours are shaped in a cylindrical shape. Very different, okay? What ends up happening is that where we go sharp, they go flat. Where we go flat, they go sharp. So you know how we go really flat when we go low or when we're getting softer? Well, clarinets have the exact opposite problem and they tend to get sharp when they get soft or when they go low. So just keep that in mind and that will really help you adjust to the clarinets behind us. Always good to be nice to the clarinetists. Now, especially for this concert, you really need to use your peripheral vision. That is to watch Dr. Zagulka. You will always see his downbeats. His conducting is extremely clear. If you get lost, watch for his downbeats. Chances are within one or two measures, you'll get right back on track. Alrighty, so let's get right into the pieces. First off, make sure you listen to the pieces. They are all on iLearn. Even if you don't have the music in front of you, it's really great just to listen to it to get an idea of what it should sound like. And it's great because the pieces are so different that anybody listening to it with their headphones on, you can actually tell which piece they're listening to. So now into the pieces themselves. I'm gonna go in concert order, at least for now. It is subject to change, so pay attention in rehearsal if that happens, okay? So we're gonna start with the Marquez, the Danzon number two. Really, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Just think sexy. 
that is all I really have to say about that one. You guys actually sound really good on this one, so I'm not making a big fuss about it. The second piece is the Stillwell Harbinger. Harbinger? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. I am sorry. I know that the composer of this is alive and well, and if you are watching this, I am so sorry for butchering the title of your piece. It sounds really awesome, though. Just so you guys know, if you guys listen to the recording that's on iLearn, that's actually an orchestral version. I really feel like it reminds Reminds me of the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's very adventure, awesome, badass, kick-ass sort of sound. Because this is arranged for wind band, we will be playing quite a number of string parts. Now string parts, if you listen to the recording, it sounds a lot softer than what we are currently doing in rehearsal. So make sure you play soft. This is why Charles is telling us to go one on a stand. There are so many of us woodwinds that it is way overpowering right now. These tremolos, you know when violinists go like <laughs> Ooh, suspense. Currently, we're kind of playing it like in terms of the fingerings for the tremolos. Let me just put the website right here. Okay, I'm gonna put the direct link in the bottom bar below, so just go to that link and check it out. Some of the meters in here, it's not as bad as some of the other pieces that we have done before. We have a couple of 5-8 bars. The 5-8 bars are all 1-2, 1-2, 3, 1-2, 1-2, 3. Now, the big one, the Husa, apotheosis of this earth. There is a PDF on the iLearn, go and read that. Some of the words got cut off, but you get the general gist of what it is. This piece is actually about the destruction of the earth based on how us lovely humans are treating it currently. Husa lived through World War II. Also, side note, he studied with Nadia Boulanger for the people who watched my last video. The first movement, you will find that it kind of sounds like those like sci-fi movies. Planets are emerging in the darkness. So the second movement is the tragedy of destruction. And it sounds like exactly what the title says. It is tragic and it is a lot of destruction. We went over this in rehearsal, and I don't think I have to go over it again in this video, but just make sure you are looking at Dr. Zagoka at least through your peripheral vision to see where the downbeats are. He is incredibly clear. I sit so far on the side of him that sometimes I only really see his back and I can still tell which beat he's on. I don't know if you, you fluties remember, but in the last rehearsal, the horn section was discussing their upwards glissandi. That's actually covered in the PDF. In the PDF, it says that those are actually whale calls. I think those are like distress calls. Husa did a lot of research on whales and he was really concerned about them going extinct. Now, the third movement, this is something that we haven't gone over in rehearsal yet. This third movement is sort of a reflection. It's like regretting all of the horrible things you did to destroy this earth. There are some spoken parts to this. It's actually written in here and it's metrical. I think we're gonna go over that in rehearsal, but it's just a heads up, that's what's gonna happen. Also a heads up, I have a solo spoken part towards the end, so don't be alarmed if suddenly out of the blue I start saying beautiful earth. I thought I would just let you guys know ahead of time so you're not like as we said in rehearsal, please read the performance notes. It should only take you about two or three minutes. It's not rocket science, but you do need to know how to do the things that are asked of you. In terms of the quarter tones and stuff like that, really that's just a lot of pitch bending. If it's a quarter tone down, just really flatten the note, just roll in like crazy. If it's a quarter tone sharp, then just roll out like crazy. In this particular piece, there are two major techniques that you need to have down, and that is double tonguing and flutter tonguing. Last year, I actually made a video that I only posted on Facebook, but it is public. I will link that in the bottom bar below. You can go check that out if you're unfamiliar with double tonguing and flutter tonguing. Alrighty, so that is it for now. If you guys have more questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Now for the rest of you guys who are not part of my section, this is what I'm like as a flute section leader. This video was probably quite different from my other videos and a lot more technical. Let me know if you guys like this video. I kind of just throwing it together really quickly because I need to get this video out to my flute section as soon as possible because I looked at this music for this particular concert and I was like, I have to make a video so you guys aren't so overwhelmed. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit subscribe for more videos coming out, and I will see you guys in the next video.
Bye. Careful with the page turn. I know, I know, I know. Don't wait. <laughs> okay, okay, don't wait, don't wait. Yeah. Okay, okay, I won't wait. All right, I should probably write that down. See, kids, this is why you have a pencil. <laughs> Whoa. 15 more. Type, 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 mom. Dr. Zagka. Zagulka. Zagulka. Sorry, Dr. Zagulka, if you're watching this. Which you probably are.